Sometimes, well, hell yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay, but not all the time. That's, and they're the only words that seem to have that restriction. I mean, there are a lot of words you can say whenever you want, you know. Pneumonia! Nobody gives you a lot of... All right, you can't yell it in the hospital a great deal, but what the hell? <laughs> there are words that you can say, no problem. Topography! No one has ever gone to jail for screaming topography. But there are some words that you can go to jail for. There are some words that we just have decided we will not say all the time. Sometimes, okay, if you're running through the jungle chasing somebody that we're at war with, you can holler them. If you're shooting a criminal, it's okay. It's the all-American thing. Dirty fucking crook. <laughs> but if you're with the bishop's wife at lunch, it's better not to ask for the goddamn lettuce. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just like we've decided there'd be some words we won't say all the time. And I was just trying to find out which words they were. For sure. All of them. I wanted a list. Because nobody gives you a list. That's the problem. They don't give you a list. Wouldn't you think it'd be normal if they didn't want you to say something to tell you what it is? Nobody even tells you when you're a kid what the words are that you're supposed to avoid. You have to say them to find out which ones they are. Ready to run. Shit! <laughs> oh, fuck! <laughs> That's two. Oh, Ma, that's enough trial and error, huh? Please, Ma, give me a list, huh? All right, you're six years old now, and here's the list of words your dad and I don't ever want to hear you say. Oh, hey, thanks, Ma. Boy, that's going to save me an ass kicking or two. <laughs> Yeah, you never know what's going to be on the list. Because it's always somebody else's list. You didn't make that up. Somebody told you that shit. They told you, better, better not say that. So you got to... And you don't know what's going to be on their list. God, people's lists even change from day to day. Some people on Friday night got a list, you know, not about two or three words. Sunday morning, goddamn, there's 27 words. On it. These are the same people two days later. Different list. So you got to kind of watch out what you're going to believe from them. The trouble Get is, I was to trying to find left. out what these words might be. And I wanted to know the ones that you could never say on television. Turn I mean, left. filthy words that are always filthy. There are a lot of these little two-way, double entendre words that have two meanings. Get words ready that to turn okay right. Part of the time. I call them like part-time filth. Some of these words, they're only 50% dirty. Turn you right. Words like ass. Ass is hardly even a dirty word anymore, but it has a few meanings that you can't say on television. That's what I was talking about. What can you say on television? That's another one of those places where we can't use these words all the time. But some Go of them are right. some of the time. Ass is all right on television. You can say on television things like, well, you've made a perfect ass of yourself tonight. But you can't say, hey, let's go get some ass. <laughs> Turn bitch, right. bitch is another word like that, same kind of word. It's the only dirty part of the time. Depends on what you mean by are. bitch. You Safe might be the lady sense. from the San Diego Zoo visiting one of the Tonight Shows, and you might just have a bunch of little canines with you there. One of them is a female. You say, there's the bitch, Johnny, and it's okay, fine. Just don't refer to the singer the same way. That's <laughs> Is that bitch going to do another number? Yes. <laughs> Animals are fine on those two-way words, and that's it. That's what I was trying to find, the words that were always dirty, not just part of the time but completely filth. Well, in, in looking for these words, I kept finding new categories. We have so many ways of describing these dirty words. It's, well, we have more ways to describe dirty words than we actually have dirty words. That seems a little strange to me. It seems to indicate that somebody was awfully interested in these words. They kept referring to them. They called them bad words, dirty. Filthy, foul, vile, vulgar, coarse, in poor taste, unseemly, street talk, gutter talk, locker room language, <laughs> barracks talk, body, naughty, saucy, raunchy, rude, crude, lewd, lascivious, indecent, profane, obscene, blue, off color, Let's do this. risque, suggestive. Cursing, cussing, swearing, and all I could think of was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. That's all I hear. Yeah. 
shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. That was my original list. I knew it wasn't complete. Turn left. But it was a starter set, you know? <laughs> shit, piss, fuck, yes, WBAI is the one who played them. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Now, that was the original list. We've added a few words since then. We've added fart, turd, and twat. <laughs> Finding a new route. And I know there are some other words that many of you are wondering about, why they haven't been considered, Reroute. why they haven't shown up on the list thus far. We're looking at them all very closely. Some of your Keep favorites left, might make the list and this then year. Turn left. Asshole, ball bag, hard on, piss hard, blue balls, taint, nookie, snatch box, Get ready to pussy, turn pecker, left. pecker head, pecker tracks, turn jism, left. joint, doniker, dork, poontang. <laughs> Cornhole and dingleberry. <laughs> dingleberry, a very popular word. And to my way of thinking, dingleberry, a rather innocent sounding word. Dingleberry sounds Christmassy to me, you know. <laughs> Let's put one on the tree, Dad. <laughs> Go straight I would have been out here a little bit sooner, but they gave me uh, the wrong dressing room and I couldn't find any place to put my stuff. And I don't know how you are, but I need a place to put my stuff, so. That's what I've been doing back there, just trying to find a place for my stuff. You know how important that is. That's the whole, that's the whole meaning Get of ready. life, isn't it? Turn trying right. to find a place for your stuff. That's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. Turn right. You could just walk around all the time. That's all your house is. It's a pile of stuff with a cover on it. You see that when you take off in an airplane and you look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody's got their own pile of stuff. And when you leave your stuff, you gotta lock it up. Wouldn't want somebody to come by and take some of your stuff. They always take the good stuff. They don't bother with that crap you're saving. Ain't nobody interested in your fourth grade Keep arithmetic right, papers. And then turn right. They're looking for the good stuff. That's all your house is. It's turn a place right. to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Now. Sometimes, sometimes you've got to move. You've got to get a bigger house. Why? Too much stuff. You've got to move all your stuff. And maybe put some of your stuff in storage. Now imagine that. There's a whole industry based on keeping an eye on your stuff. Enough about your stuff. Let's talk about other people's stuff. Did you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house, you never quite feel 100% at home? You know why? No room for your stuff. Somebody else's stuff is all over the place. And what awful stuff it is. Where did they get this stuff? And if you have to stay overnight at someone's house, you know, unexpectedly, and they give you a little room to sleep in that they don't use that often. Someone died in it 11 years ago. And they haven't moved any of his stuff. Or wherever they give you to sleep, usually right near the bed, there's a dresser, and there's never any room on the dresser for your stuff. Someone else's shit is on the dresser. Have you noticed that their stuff is shit, and your shit is stuff? <laughs> Get that off of there. Now, now, sometimes you go on vacation, you gotta bring some of your stuff with you. You can't bring all your stuff. Just the stuff you really like. The stuff that fits you well that month. <laughs> Let's say you're gonna go to Honolulu. You're gonna go all the Keep way to Honolulu. Right. You gotta take two big bags off. of stuff. Plus your carry-on stuff, plus the stuff in your pockets. You get all the way to Honolulu and you get in your hotel room and you start Turn to put away right. your stuff. That's the first thing you do in a hotel room is put away your stuff. I'll put some stuff in here, put some stuff down there. Here's another place for some stuff here. I'll put some stuff over there. You put your stuff over there. I'm putting my stuff over here. Here's another place for some stuff. Hey, we got more places than we've got stuff. We're going to have to buy more stuff. Yeah. And you put all your stuff away and you know that you're thousands of miles from home and you don't quite feel at ease, but you know that you must be okay because you do have some of your stuff with you. And you relax in Honolulu on that basis. That's when your friend from Maui calls and says, hey, why don't you come over to Maui for the weekend? Spend a couple of nights over here. Oh, shit, no. Now what stuff do you bring? 
right, you've got to bring an even smaller version of your stuff. Just enough stuff for a weekend on Maui. And you get over, and you're really spread out now. You've got shit all over the world. You've got stuff at home, stuff in storage, stuff in Honolulu, stuff in Maui, stuff in your pockets. Supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain. But you get over to your friend's house in Maui and they give you a little place to sleep and there's a little window ledge or some kind of a small shelf and there's not much room on it, but it's okay because you don't have much stuff now. And you put what stuff you do have up there, you put your imported French toenail clippers, your odor eaters with the 45-day guarantee, your cinnamon-flavored dental floss, and your Afrin 12-hour decongestant nasal spray. And even though you're a long way from home, you know that you must be okay because you do have your Afrin 12-hour decongestant nasal spray. And you relax in Maui on that basis. That's when your friend says, hey, I think tonight we'll go over the other side of the island and stay at my friend's house overnight. Oh, shit, no. No, what do you bring? Now you just bring the things you know you're gonna need. Money, keys, comb, wallet, lighter, hanky, pen, cigarettes, contraceptives, Vaseline, whips, chains, whistles, dildos, and a book. Here's some just plain old words that are sort of fun to uh, think of or look at more closely than usual. Get Things ready like to hot turn right. water heater. Have you, ever, have you thought of hot water heaters? Pardon me? I turn said right. I'd like to buy a hot water heater. What the hell for? <laughs> Hot water doesn't need to be heated. You must want a cold water heater. <laughs> How about a hot water cooler? <laughs> yeah, some words are fun. Words like flammable. Get ready to turn right. Flammable. Inflammable and non inflammable. <laughs> Why are there three? Does it seem to you as though two words ought to be able to handle that idea? I mean, either the thing flams or it doesn't flam. <laughs> now, flammable, flammable, that's the one that's on the side of the truck. Flammable. As if you're going to get out of your car at 60 miles an hour and smoke on his truck, huh? <laughs> Flammable. I found out the reason it says that on the truck is so that just in case you should be spinning out of control at 70 or 80, heading for the truck, you'll know what it was that happened, you know? I'd like to talk a little bit about baseball and football. Starting with baseball, baseball is different from any other sport in a lot of different little ways. For instance, in most sports, right. you score points or you score goals. In baseball, you score runs. In most sports, the ball or the object is put in play by the offensive team. In baseball, the defense puts the ball in play, and only the defensive team is allowed to touch the ball. In fact, in baseball, if an offensive player touches the ball intentionally, he's out. Also, most sports, the team is run by a coach. In baseball, the team is run by a manager. And only in baseball does the manager or the coach have to wear the same uniform the players do. Can you picture Bill Parcells in his New York Giants uniform? Now, baseball and football are different from one another in other kind of interesting ways, I think. First of all, um, Baseball is a 19th century pastoral game. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. Baseball is played on a diamond, in a park, the baseball park. Football is played on a gridiron in a stadium, sometimes called Soldier Field or War Memorial Stadium. Baseball begins in the spring. The season of new life. Football begins in the fall when everything is dying. 
In football, you wear a helmet. Get ready In to play. In baseball, life. you wear a cap. <laughs> football is concerned with downs. Turn left. What left. down is it? Baseball is concerned with ups. Who's up? Are you up? I'm not up. He's up. In football, the specialist comes in to kick. In baseball, the specialist comes in to relieve someone. In football, you receive a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. Whoops! Football has hitting, clipping, spearing, blocking, piling on, late hitting, unnecessary roughness, and personal fouls. Baseball has the sacrifice. Football is played in any kind of weather. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, mud. Can't read the numbers on the field, can't read the yard markers, can't read the players' numbers. The struggle will continue. In baseball, if it rains, we don't come out to play. I can't come out to play, it's raining out. Baseball has a seventh inning stretch. Football has the two-minute warning. <laughs> Baseball has no time limit. We don't know when it's going to end. We might have extra innings. Football is rigidly timed, and it will end even if we have to go to sudden death. <laughs> in baseball, during the game in the stands, there's kind of a picnic feeling. Emotions may run high or low, but there's not that much unpleasantness. In football, in the stands during the game, you can be sure that at least 27 times you were perfectly capable of taking the life of a fellow human being. <laughs> Preferably a stranger. And finally, the objectives of the two games are totally different. In football, the object is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to be on target with his aerial assault, riddling the defense by hitting his receivers with deadly accuracy, in spite of the blitz, even if he has to use the shotgun. With short bullet passes and long bombs, he marches his troops into enemy territory, balancing this aerial assault with a sustained ground attack which punches holes in the forward wall of the enemy's defensive line. In baseball, the object is to go home <laughs> and to be safe. I hope I'll be safe at home. Safe at home. Hey, baby, what's happening? Que pasa? Que what you call your pasa? Al Sleet here, you hippy dippy weather man, with all the hippy dippy weather, man. Brought to you by Parsons Pest Control. Do you have termites, water bugs, and roaches? Well, Parsons will help you get rid of the termites and water bugs and help you smoke the roaches. <laughs> Temperature at the airport is 88 degrees, which is stupid, man, because I don't know anybody who lives at the airport. <laughs> Now, if you'll take a look at our national weather map, you'll see that we don't have one. <laughs> so try to picture last night's map in your mind. Remember all the letters and lines, all them little numbers. The weather's dominated by a large Canadian low, which is not to be confused with a Mexican high. <laughs> Tonight's forecast, dark. <laughs> Continue dark tonight, Keep left, and then turning turn to left. partly light in the morning. <laughs> oh, Al, Al got out of the weather business when he realized he had given the, the final weather forecast. He had given the turn ultimate left. forecast. There was nowhere to go. You know, when there's nothing left to conquer in your field, hey, it's time to leave. And old Al had given the ultimate forecast. He told us, he said, one night, that the weather will continue to change on and off for a long, long time. <laughs> and he was gone for a God bless Al. I love that dog. I've never seen him and I love him. 
He's gonna be wonderful when I meet that dog. <laughs> lots of people got lots of goddamn doggies. And you don't even have to have one to learn about doggies. Your friend might have a dog. It could be your friend's dog. He makes you him. That makes Get him your ready dog to friend. Turn right. You go to visit your friend, his dog is in, you can pet him too. Hi, oh, hello, how are you, Sneezy? You're wonderful. Hello, goddamn. And for that moment, he's your dog. Turn right. So you can have someone else's dog for a while. Ha, ah, he, he likes, he likes me. I think, oh my god, look at this doggy here. Goddamn doggies. Lots of things to know about him, too. Lots of things you learn. You don't know where always, and you can't remember. For instance, can you remember the first time you found out that by scratching a dog here, you could make this leg go like that? <laughs> And that you could make it stop when you stop. Turn left. God damn. I'm in complete control of this dog. <laughs> or that you can make their head tilt from across the room just by making a funny noise. You go... <laughs> and he goes... <laughs> oh, look, honey, isn't he cute? Let's get his head fixed so he stays like that. <laughs> Did you ever spell in front of your dog? Some of them are smart. You got a spell. Honey, do we have any more B-O-N-E-S? People, they know the sound of B alone. Be bone, 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 and sooner or later, what's going to happen with the little dog? Sooner or later, lying on the bed, he's going to create an incident. He's going to make one of you humans turn to the other and say, Phew. Honey, did you fart? Not me. I thought you turn farted. Left. Not me. That's not even one of my farts. <laughs> I've got four farts, and that's not one of mine. Get ready. I've got my Heineken's right. fart. I got my broccoli fart, my rice pudding Turn fart, right. and my non-dairy creamer fart. <laughs> and that's not one of my farts. I know. The dog farted. Timmy, why did you fart? Look at him. He knows he farted. I seen his asshole open up. I seen him. Go straight oh, on. I happen to be looking at his asshole by chance. Get what kind ready of a question is that? I thought he was doing them deep breathing exercises. Turn right. You see, dogs have nothing to do. There's no job description for a dog. Get ready to turn They're left. They're forced to wait for something to happen that they can get in on. Turn left. If you do something, they'll be glad to join you. <laughs> but they rarely initiate any activity on their own. They're just waiting. Waiting. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Waiting to come in, waiting to go out, waiting to eat, waiting to crap, waiting to wake up, waiting to sleep, waiting to go upstairs, waiting to go downstairs. Sometimes they're just waiting to wait. <laughs> you ever seen a dog just standing there? Get ready to turn right. He don't know what he's waiting for. But if it happens, turn he'll be right. ready. <laughs> just a waiting and a waiting. <laughs> waiting for you to come home. They don't understand time. Dog doesn't know the difference between an hour and a half or next week. He thinks you're going to be gone forever. That's the only time period dogs really understand. Forever. That's how long they think everything lasts. That's how long they think everything takes. Forever and ever. Do you ever scratch your dog behind the ears? Oh boy, they love that, huh? Oh boy, you're scratching your doggy behind the ears and he really does that. And you're looking at him and everything. And when you finally stop, he looks at you like you're a criminal. <laughs> he thought it was going to go on and on. Same thing when you feed them, as soon as they get finished, they say, where the fuck's the food? <laughs> they thought it was the loaves and the fishes. It was going to last forever and ever. Dog don't know. 
They must think we're going to be gone forever. Otherwise, why would they act the way they do when we finally get home? Oh boy, 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 oh boy. I thought you were never going to come home. I thought you were never going to come home. I thought you were never going to come home. I thought you were never going to come home. I didn't know what to do. You know what? I didn't know how to operate the can opener. How do you operate the can opener? I didn't know what to do, man. What do you push it down? I couldn't think of it. You know what? You know what I did? I took a can of dog food and I rolled it down the hill and hope a truck ran it over. That's all I can think of, man. I mean, they'll do that if you even just forgot your hat. You come back in eight seconds. Oh boy, oh boy, I thought you were never going to come home. I thought you were never going to come home. I was going to eat the bird. I couldn't find the bird. Where the fuck's the bird? And you ate the bird. Will you stop it? I was just here. Dog don't care. He'll do whatever's next. He don't know what's next, but he'll do something. They'll do two things in a row that don't go together. You ever seen a dog walking through a room and suddenly he stops and chews his back for 18 minutes? <laughs> and then when he's finished chewing, as if it were scheduled for right then, of course. And when he's finished, he doesn't even know where it was he was gonna go. Where was I gonna go? Oh, shit. Oh, I think I'll go over here. Oh, this is nice over here. I think I'll keep coming over here. He'll give you that doggy look. Give you them eyes, you know, they have such a great expression, almost human. Sometimes we say that, isn't it? Look, he looks almost human, Dan. They do, you know, they look like they know something about your mother. <laughs> They're not willing to mention it right away. Time they just look next like they got a trig problem they can't quite solve. There's a, there's a sad look in their eyes. All the sadness in the world is right in the eyes of a dog. Did you ever do this? Look right into your doggy's eyes and think of something really sad and it'll look like it's happening to your dog <laughs> strangest thing they look at you like that you know why they have so successful a look because they got eyebrows dogs have eyebrows or at least little ridges that pass for eyebrows they got little things that they can manipulate just like we do Oh, please, please, Daddy, one more treat. <laughs> Cats can't look at you like that. Cats don't look at that. Cats look at you coldly as if they're testing new eyes. Okay, here we go. reason cats look different, cats don't have eyebrows. Cats have a bunch of shit sticking out of their head. <laughs> they thought it was going to be an eyebrow, but it didn't work out. Let's not tell them, they think it's an eyebrow. It's just a bunch of shit sticking out of their head. Cats are cute. Cats are goddamn cute. Isn't he cute? Look at him. God, he's cute. He's a kitty cat. That's how cute they are. They needed two names. Kitty wasn't cute enough. Kitty cat. Isn't he cute? The kitty cat. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Let's drown him. <laughs> He's a cute little goddamn kitty cat. Ain't he? Look. Stick him on the wall. See if he hangs up there. Whoa! Little goddamn kitty cat. They're so goddamn cute. Oh, they're wonderful. God love them. They're so physical. That's what's fun. They're so physical. They love to rub on you. They love to rub on you. If you've got a leg and a cat, whew, you got a party. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I love his leg, oh boy. I'm rubbing on his leg, oh boy, oh boy. He's if you right. got two legs, shit, and then Jubilee celebration time. Oh boy, two legs, hot shit. I can do the figure eight. Go they love to on. do the figure eight. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I love to rub on his leg. They'll rub against your leg even if you're not there yet. You might still be 50 feet down the hall. They see you coming. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, soon I'll be rubbing on his leg. Soon. They'll even walk sideways so they don't miss you. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy. They love it. They're so physical. You don't have to pet a cat. You just put your hand over him and he'll do all the work, man. <laughs> you pet him? You ever pet a cat who's lying absolutely flat? And before you're halfway finished, his ass is way up in the air. <laughs> like you pressed the ass button or something. Isn't he a cute little... Holy shit! How did he do that? Keep left. 
and then Then turn they jump back. on your chest and put their ass right in your face. <laughs> Here's my ass, Dad. Check turn this left. ass, huh? And while they're showing you their ass, they give you some of this stuff. I say, get them off of me! Jesus, I hate that. I don't even know what it is, and I don't like it. Look like they're into some bad drug. There's one other quality cats have, which uh, I admire. Cats don't accept blame. They don't embarrass at all. A cat does something dumb, you never know it by looking at him. Dog knocks over a lamp, you can tell who did it just by looking at the dog. Not the cat. Cat doesn't accept any blame. Cat moves along to the next activity. What's that? Not me. Fuck that. I'm a cat. I'm... Something break? Ask the dog. Cat doesn't get embarrassed. You ever seen a cat race across a carpet and crash into a glass door? I meant that. I meant that. I meant that. That's exactly how I wanted that to look. <laughs> Fucking meow. <laughs> Fucking meow. <laughs> Fucking meow. That's what they say when they get behind the couch. Cat's too proud to let you see him suffer. But you look behind the couch and you'll find your cat recuperating from a domestic accident. They got little slings and walkers, you know. <laughs> Tried to make the window from the lamp. If you use vitamins, most good vitamins don't have a trade name stamped on them. They're blank pills. They look like vitamins, but they're not marked. And if you go on the road and you take a lot of vitamins with you, enough for like two weeks, you might put them in another big vial unmarked. And now you've got an unmarked vial with unmarked pills in it. And if you're going through some little place, maybe where the cops got a heart on that day. <laughs> and he wants to give you a little trouble, a little heat. He can hold you for a while while they send these things down to the lab. And off your vitamins go. And that's why I, I always travel with Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> So, the words, as I say, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turd, and twat. Now, motherfucker came off the list immediately. The first day, in fact, I had a call from an English language purist. Some guy had to, he had to talk, you know, he got on the phone. He tells me I have a duplicate on my list. I have a duplication. He says, motherfucker is a duplication of the word fuck, technically. Because fuck is the root form, motherfucker being derivative, therefore, it constitutes duplication. I said, hey, motherfucker, how did you get my phone number anyway? I didn't even know I got the phone. I said, look, man, it may be derivative, but you still can't say it. You still can't say motherfucker on TV, can you? He said, no, but you can't say fucky, fucking, fuckola, fuckaroonie, or fuckerino either. <laughs> Well, I said, yeah, that would crowd up my list some off. <laughs> so I just struck that motherfucker away. <laughs> struck it from the list. Motherfucker was gone. Now the list was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Doesn't it sound like something's missing? Does it sound like an old friend is gone? <laughs> shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Remember the old rhythm? Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Cocksucker motherfucker tits. Cocksucker motherfucker tits. Cocksucker motherfucker tits. Now, shit piss fuck on cocksucker tits. It falls apart. It isn't going anywhere. And by now, cocksucker is the dominant word on the list. Previously, with motherfucker on the list, cocksucker was somewhat balanced out. They were the only multisyllabic words on the list. But now, cocksucker stands alone. Shit piss fuck on cocksucker tits. <laughs> And who knows, maybe it doesn't belong either. After all, motherfucker turned out to be a ringer. Let's take a look at cocksucker. <laughs> See if this one belongs. We'll divide the word cock and sucker from each other, those words. Sucker isn't dirty, sucker. That's, it's suggestive as hell. <laughs> but it isn't dirty. 
and cock. That's not dirty all the time. That's one of those words that's only partly filthy. Cock, if you're talking about the animal, it's perfectly all right. They used to read that to us from the Bible in third grade. And we would laugh now. <laughs> cock is in the Bible. Remember the first time you heard about a cock fight? What? No. <laughs> Even the word cocksucker itself has been twisted out of all of its original meaning. It's been distorted. For some reason now, cocksucker means bad man. It's a good woman. How did they do that? How did they do that? Well, tits is on the end of the list. Shit, piss, fucking, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. And you know it doesn't belong on that list. I mean, it really doesn't belong in with that kind of heavyweight filth. Tits isn't dirty. Tits is cute name. Cute thing, cute idea. Great fun. Good name. <laughs> tits, hey, tits sounds like a friend. It sounds like a nickname, doesn't it? Hey, tits, come here, man. <laughs> Hey, Tits, I want you to meet Toots. Tits, this is Toots. Toots, Tits. Tits, cute word, nice word. I love a word that spells the same forwards and backwards like Tit. Don't you think it's so cute when a word is spelled the same forwards and backwards? I always wished my name was Otto. Just so I could walk backwards and yell my name, you know? Otto, Otto, Otto. Well, I had strange dreams. But the word tit is on the list because you can't say it on television. You can't say tit. Imagine that. You can't say tits. You can say boobs. Boob is spelled the same forwards and backwards, too. <laughs> boobs is all right. You can't say tits, but you can say boobs. In fact, boobs is an answer now in match game. I had boobs, Gene. Boobs, $200. <laughs> tits, $200 fine, maybe. <laughs> You can't say tits, you can say teats. Teats is all right, providing you're on at five in the morning and a cow is your guest. <laughs> but you can't say jugs and you can't say knockers, you know. That's right, Danny, pull on the cow's knockers. <laughs> right, grab a knocker in each hand, that a boy. Now alternate knockers, good deal. Can't say that. Tits. Tits sounds like a snack, you know? Well, I know what you're thinking, but tits sounds almost, it sounds Nabisco to me. It sounds like Nabisco has, has reserved that name. Because tits sounds like a thing at a party. Pass the tits, would you be? Oh, thanks. <laughs> Say, those things are responding. <laughs> Ship is fucking toxic motherfucker tits. Fart, turd, and twat. Fart? Fart is like tit. It's one of those words that isn't that harmful. You know, it's just a cute kind of thing. Fart. Well, farts can be a little harmful. It depends. <laughs> depends on who's cooking. But fart. <laughs> fart? Fart is a cute... Hey, kids know farts are okay. Kids know farts are fun. <laughs> farts are shit without the mess. <laughs> Yeah, same funny sound, same vile smell, no fuss, no mush. <laughs> fart is an interesting word in this respect, talking about television. Fart is extremely interesting because, dig this, you can't say fart on television, we know that. You can't say fart, and you can't say fuck either on television. However, you can refer to fucking you can talk about fucking. They do that all the time. Some of the times, the show you're watching, two people are probably fucking in the other room. <laughs> fucking is all right. Fucking is part of the plot. A lot of plots are based on fucking. Will they fuck? Should they fuck? Have they fucked? Did they fuck? Will they fuck again? Will they get sick from fucking? Are they fucking too much? Will they fuck each other's friends? Will they have a baby from fucking? Will they be sorry they fucked? Will they be glad they fucked? All fuck stories. Every honeymoon joke is a fuck joke. Have you ever noticed it? Otherwise, the people wouldn't be on their honeymoon in the joke. They'd be knights or they'd be sailors or something. If they're on their honeymoon. There's got to be a fuck joke. Every little, every news, I'm sorry, every quiz master has stood there with his newlywed couple and said, and I understand you folks are on your honeymoon. <laughs> Lots of fucking going on here. <laughs> Lots of fucking over here. 
So they talk about fucking all they want. They just don't call it that. They don't call it what it is. They call it other things. They call it making love, which is fine. They call it going to bed with someone. Keep Having left. an affair. Sleeping together. But they don't call it fucking. On the other hand, fart. Not only is fart a word you can't use on television, but they never even refer to them. <laughs> That's how bad farts are compared to fucking. <laughs> they don't even refer to farts. There are no farts on television. You've never seen a reference to a fart? I've never seen a fart reference. No, wouldn't you think that by now one guy would have gone, hmm. Keep left. Hmm. Do you think by now that one guy on the Johnny Carson panel just once would have said, hey, Ed, move down, man. <laughs> Woo! Wow. That was a Clydesdale fart, Ed. <laughs> Give me the lighter, will you, Johnny? Wow. Jeez, Ed, next time you're sick, you ought to see the nurse, you know? God, it's not the smell so much. It's the burning of my eyes! <laughs> well, my, we might live to see that, you never know. Remember when you were a kid? Maybe you were a little boy child like me out on short pants, maybe sitting in church? Sitting on a wooden bench in church in the middle of the summer with short pants? <laughs> you got a fart, you know? And it's up to you. You got to work out a little maneuver that's called... The one cheek sneak. <laughs> right in tune with the organ. That's why they call them pews, you know. <laughs> pew! 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 Did you ever notice that your own farts smell okay? <laughs> Say, that's fairly decent. <laughs> I think I'll stay home today. <laughs> Do some reading in the closet. Keep left. Now, I mentioned the three extra words, fart, turd, and twat. Turd is another word you can't say on television, turd. But, you know, when you get right down to it, who wants to say it? <laughs> I don't even care if I ever hear that one again. Twat, twat is on the list for the same reason. It Keep doesn't right mean anything else. And then exit you know, right. It only has that one meaning, twat's twat, and that's that. <laughs> it's not like prick. Prick is one of those part-time dirty words. Prick is all right. You can say prick on exit television. Right. You can say, I pricked my finger. Just don't say you fingered your prick. That's <laughs> Straight on. Now, the dog might just embarrass you if it gets the chance. Let's go out to the front of your house, out to the living room. And uh, you're there now with your doggies there, of course. And you have some friends in, some neighbors over, sitting around go the coffee on. table. And uh, chit-chat, you know, talking to each other. You brought your Pepsi down, but fuck them, let them get their own Doritos. I'm not here to feed the neighborhood. <laughs> and everybody's sitting around, and the dog is licking his balls! Nobody mentions it. Spectacular thing going on there. If I could reach, I'd never leave the house, man. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they don't even mention it. 
They say things like, isn't he cute? He's taking a bath. He appears to be licking his balls to me, Marge. Yeah, he's been on that one spot for over an hour. That's a mighty selective bath. No, 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 nice doggy. No, no, nice doggy. No, 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 no. Nice doggy. No, no, no. Don't you know they have the cleanest mouth of any animal? I'm just going by where he's been, honey. I am not a chemist. I don't have a nice day anymore. I don't bother much with that. I think I'm beyond that now. I think I've outgrown the nice day. I think I've had my share. Why should I be hogging all Keep the really left, nice ones? And then turn Let left. Let somebody else have a few. Of course, everybody still wants me to have one. Turn left. Everybody wants me to have a nice day. Have a nice day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to give me my fucking change, please? I'm triple park. Some of them are really insistent. I said have a nice day! Turn left. All right, all right, God damn it, all right, I'll give it a shot. That's the this trouble with have a nice day. It puts all the pressure on you. Now you've got to go out and somehow manage to have a good time. All because of some loose-lipped cashier. Have a nice day. Maybe I don't feel like having a nice day. Maybe, just maybe, I've had 116 nice days in a row. And I'm ready, by God, for a crappy day. I'll never hear that. Let him wish one of them. Hey, have a crappy day. Thank you, and to your wonderful family as well. Crappy day. Hey, that'd be easy. It's no trouble at all. A crappy day. Just get up. There's no planning involved for a crappy day. I know what it is that bothers me about that whole thing. It's the word nice. It's just a weak word. It doesn't have a lot of character, you know. Nice. Isn't he nice? Oh, he is.